Thank you so much, Amanda, uh, and good morning to everyone. It's uh, it's a pleasure to be here joining you uh, remotely. Um, unfortunately, I couldn't be there in person. Um, I'm actually joining you from Hawaii, where I'm working remotely uh, for the uh, for the, the next month. Um, but you know, Korea is the home of the fund, uh, and without further ado, because I know I only have about ten minutes, uh, I, I'd like to jump in. Amanda gave me uh, sort of a wonderful background. I'm happy to answer more. I'm also my profiles on LinkedIn. Uh, if anyone would like to uh, to check that out. Um, so jumping right in now, uh, let me go ahead and share a presentation. Let's see. All right. Um, hopefully uh, everyone can see that. Um, and so, yeah, so um, love to introduce to you, uh, everyone. And I'm hoping many of you already are aware um, of the Green Climate Fund. And this is actually um, a recap of some of the things that you already know. Uh, but it's it's very surprising uh, for me to meet folks uh, in the climate space who aren't aware of the Green Climate Fund. Uh, it, it is the world's largest climate fund, um, originally uh, set up in 2010 um, when the UNFCCC uh, recognized that they wanted uh, sort of an independent finance vehicle, uh, which is needed uh, to really drive uh, climate change um, finance because it really is at the at the cutting edge. So. Um, moving on for um, for today. So, uh, as I mentioned, um, the uh, the fund was set up in, in 2010. Uh, the original pledge uh, was from uh, developed uh, countries uh, to pledge 10 billion dollars a year uh, every four years for 40 years uh, to bring the fund eventually up um, to a size of around 100 billion dollars. Uh, we know that the the challenge is in trillions, um, but as the world's climate, largest climate fund, uh, it was set up to be sort of a beacon or an anchor to, to help everyone sort of understand um, and also to take the risk uh, that was needed um, to really to really push climate finance uh, in, a, in, in the direction that we need, which is really, <laughs> which is really at the, uh, the cutting edge uh, and taking risk uh, in new markets. So the, the purpose of the fund is to support developing countries uh, in transition. Uh, and then finally, as I mentioned, is to serve as a as a hub uh, for climate finance. So the fund is now was set up actually in 2014 and uh, began deploying its first projects in 2015. And so where we are today uh, is that we've approved about thirteen and a half billion dollars worth of funding um, and about ten point eight billion dollars dollars of that is uh, under implementation and three point eight has already been dispersed. Um, you know, COVID actually took a pretty big toll on the disbursements um, and that's why so that, that's slow. Uh, but now that COVID is finished, uh, we're rapidly uh, seeing disbursements increase and hopefully we're accelerating uh, the path to uh, solving climate change. Um, Green Climate Fund um, holds a very special place uh, within the universe um, of climate finance. Uh, you'll see us right there in the center writing very large ticket sizes in very risky instruments uh, and also being financial instrument agnostic. Uh, you know, we, we sit there and we do not um, really distinguish um, we really actually, well, probably the best way to put it is, is we really serve whatever the country needs. If they say they need loans, we work with loans. If they say they need equity, we work with equity. Uh, it's really a, a country driven model. Uh, and we want to be as incredibly flexible as we can um, to answer the challenges that every individual developing country needs um, to, to, to tackle climate change. So how do we do it? <clears throat> uh, as I mentioned, uh, we are country driven. Um, we work with, uh, we identify within every developing country, a national designated authority who speaks on behalf of the stakeholders within the country. And effectively, when we do projects in a country, we ask for at least a, a letter of no objection. Um, we then work with accredited entities. So the Green Climate Fund is a second level entity. We are more like a fund of funds where we are providing our funds to an accredited entity who then the accredited entity actually then implements the projects uh, on the ground. Uh, we try to be fairly lightweight and be sort of uh, more finance focused, um, uh, whereas the accredited entities and the deployment partners uh, tend to be the boots on the ground. Um, uh, we then again, as I mentioned, are, are sort of instrument agnostic. Uh, we really want to work with the countries and the accredited entities to deliver uh, the financial instruments that whatever is needed at that time. Uh, and then we also look for a balanced allocation between mitigation and adaptation. Um, and, and finally, um, we do have a very patient uh, appetite um, and very concessional capital um, for, uh, we really want to see cutting edge stuff. Uh, you know, if, if this is, you know, the 40th uh, solar project in a developing country, uh, we're, we're probably not as interested in that 
as if we, we would be in the first solar project in a, in, a, in a utility scale solar project in like a developing country that has never had it before. Um, when we when you look at the actual projects themselves and, and the, the path that we go through, uh, we provide funding uh, at the outset, um, which, which we call the readiness program uh, for countries to uh, help design their uh, national action plans uh, to meet their uh, nationally determined contributions, which all of the developing countries put forward at the Kyoto Protocol. Uh, we then provide another second layer of funding um, called the project preparation facility, where countries who, once they have their plans and have identified how they want to reach the targets they've committed to, uh, they then design projects within those, those, those areas uh, that they're looking for, and then we'll provide project finance, uh, we'll provide project funding for them to, to help design and get technical expertise to design really great projects. And then lastly, working with the accredited entities, we will then provide uh, the capital in uh, to do the projects themselves. Um, one, of our, one of our key uh, pieces is that we, we're always at the cutting edge and we know that we'll be gathering a lot of information from every project that we deploy. We know that also projects will not, um, will not always succeed, but that the value of learning and failure is, is huge uh, and that we tend to gather all that information and publish it on our website um, so that as other countries begin looking at similar projects, they can take the learnings there and have a higher rate of success or make or adjust their national action plans um, accordingly. So we tend to focus in, in eight areas. Uh, on the mitigation side, we look at energy generation, we look at transport, we look at buildings, and then finally forests and land use. And on the mitigation side, uh, we're looking at the livelihoods of people and communities, health, food and water security, uh, infrastructure in the built environment, and then ecosystems and ecosystem services. We um, Here's a snapshot of where our resources are today. Uh, the top line there shows the three uh, pledging cycles that we've had. So now that we're into going into our, our third, technically third uh, pledging cycle, which we call GCF2, um, we've received uh, about 33, just over $33 billion in pledges. Um, we've actually received from those pledges um, $18 uh, billion, and we've actually committed just over $17 billion uh, so far um, as of March of this year. Um, and then again, when you sort of look at um, when you sort of look at the portfolio, we're implementing $12 billion and already dispersed four. And one of the, like I mentioned, the, the largest metrics of success for us uh, is not just the impact that we have, because we, we look at each of those uh, mitigation adaptation in terms of carbon avoided, uh, but also in terms of people and communities served. Um, we also look at the amount of uh, funding that we can attract from other sources to our projects. Uh, and to date, having deployed about $14 billion, uh, the total portfolio size is, is around 53, showing a multiplication factor of about uh, 4x. Um, but we obviously want to keep seeing more. Um, looking at the portfolio, again, we're, we're looking for a 50 uh, basis in sort of adaptation and mitigation, uh, which we're, we're, we're sticking pretty closely to. Um, and also for geographies, uh, we're active pretty, pretty well distributed across Asia Pacific, Africa, Latin America, and the Caribbean, and also a small portion um, in Eastern Europe. And in terms of uh, funding by sector, we do public sector projects, which tend to be more grant oriented, um, uh, about two thirds of it. And then about you know, one third of our portfolio is private sector, which is where a lot of the leverage um, in the portfolio comes from. Um, and then also when you look at the actual, um, uh, when you look at the actual financial products that we've, we've used so far, about 42% of our, uh, we've given out in grants, 40% in loans, uh, and then about 10% in equity, and the rest is a smattering of uh, results-based payments and guarantees. Uh, and just to give everyone a flavor of sort of the projects that we do, um, if you look on our website, every single project, because we are using public funds, we are incredibly communicative about every single project, all the results, et cetera, but you can see every single project in detail. Uh, usually they're, they're on the order of about 200 pages <laughs> for the funded activity agreements. But in this case, we have a funding project uh, 198, which is called Catalyst. Uh, we worked with an accredited entity called, uh, we, we call it affectionately GIZ because <laughs> they don't like pronouncing the entire, the entire German name. Uh, but we provided $29 million uh, and uh, received an additional 10 million um, uh, from other supporters uh, for mitigation 16 countries. And we basically set up an accelerator and look for startups in climate tech uh, all across these 16 countries. 
Uh, we're basically uh, incubating them and investing in them and hoping to provide um, and hoping to hoping that they are then the creating these entire climate tech industries within these countries. And with that, I will pause so people can ask questions. Thank you.